Good morning everyone, this is my case digest I made from the article GR number 1999-75, February 24, 2020 Luis T. Ariola Petitioner vs. People of the Philippines is funded So first, what is digest case? What is the three part of it? So case digest or a case brief is a written summary of the case A case sometimes involves several issues Digesting the same would help the student in separating the one issue from another and understanding how the court resolved the issues in the case so the first part of it is the facts describe the history of the dispute including the events that lead to lawsuit the legal claims and defense of each party and what happened in the trial court so the second part is issue it's a statement of the question of the law that court must must answer in order to decide which party should win and the last one is the held or the decision court. The holding in a particular case is the ultimate decision of a court of justiciable controversy. In the case given or the article, here is the fox. The RTC issued its April 17, 2007, Decision 12, convicting Ariolas of the crime charge. It found that the prosecution sufficiently discharged its burden of proving Ariolas' guilt beyond reasonable doubt. The RTC concluded that through Ariolas' fraudulent representations and false pretenses, Del Rosario parted with her hard-earned money and paid him the amount of 437000 as the agreed consideration for the poor case of Candelara Slat which Ariola represented to be for sale and that he was duly authorized by its owner to sell. Ariola also admitted having received the Del Rosario's money. The evidence presented by the prosecution was undisputed, as Ariola failed to rebut the same despite several opportunities given to him to do so. It is mentioned in the Fox where in this case the incident was all arises when the both parties made and transactions. Wherein Ariola offered a selling land to Del Rosario and Del Rosario accepted the offer and purchased the land then received a photocopy of documents. Then after a failure of Ariola delivering the original copy, he contacted the real owner's name Candelaria and found out that the land was not selling the subject property nor had she authorized Ariola to sell it. Del Rosario does file the Estapa case against Ariola. So Del Rosario is the victim of the fraud and the suspect here is Ariola who committed the uncivil act. The real owner of the land is Candelaria who is the owner of the land and he doesn't sell it. The case has two issues. First, whether or not accused Luis T. Ariola is guilty of Estapa. So in this case, Mr. Ariola is committed a fraud or swindling to Del Rosario wherein he obtained the total amount of 437000 which amount the accused applied and used for his own benefits to the damage and prejudice. Second, whether or not petitioner's defense under the Equipoise Doctrine should be acknowledged. The petitioner presents an evidence which has been discussed thoroughly. The equipoise doctrine is the rule which states that when the evidence of the prosecution and the defense are so evenly balanced, the appreciation of such evident, evidence calls for tilting of the scales in the favor of the accused. So the court decisions is the petition is denied. The assailed August 5, 2011, decision is and January 3, 2012, dissolution of the Court of Appeals in CAGR, CR number 31338, are affirmed with modifications. Petitioner Luis T. Ariola is ordered to suffer the indeterminate penalty of two months and one day of arresto mayor as minimum to one year, one day of prison correctional as maximum. To discuss furthermore his violations is the following. First, as laid down by jurisprudence, the elements of estapa by means of deceit under Article 315, Paragraph 2A of the R RPC are as follows. A. That there must be a false pretense of fraudulent representation as to the offender's power, influence, qualifications, property, credit, agency, business, or imaginary transactions. In this case, Ariola gave the Rosario photocopy of transfer certificate of title TCT the number 33184 then also failed to deliver the original copy to Del Rosario B that such false pre 
intense or fraudulent representation was made or executed prior to or simultaneously with the commission of the fraud. In this part, it states the case that Ariola received 100,000 as earnest money which can recognize as a form of commission. C. That the offended party relied on the false pretense fraudulent act or fraudulent means and was induced to part with his money or property and in the statement mentioned, mentioned that offended part has induced his money to purchase the land and also he gave the real estate broker a cash as the earnest money. D. That as a result thereof, the offended party suffered damage. Del Rosario is the offended party who suffered damage after he found out Candelaria the land was not in selling. Also, he lost his money. So that's all. Thank you.